come with me, Jake Turner, as I travel the back roads talking with your neighbors and crop experts about best practices in weed control in soybeans. All you need is a minute and authority minute. There are a lot of things beyond weed control that could be of concern this time of year. Insect management is one of them. So I'm headed to Starkville, Mississippi to talk with Angus Catshot, an extension entomologist at Mississippi State University. Hey, Angus. How you doing? Doing great. Nice Thanks for your time today. So tell me about these fields we're going to be scouting for insect pressure today. Well, this is actually uh, set up, this is actually a graduate student project, and we have a number of planting dates from the very early side to the very late side, indeterminate and determinate soybean varieties. And what we're actually doing is we're actually looking at when certain pest pro uh, pressure infests or certain insect species infest based on planting date, growth stage, growth habit, and so forth. And I hope what we can do is actually uh, kind of create some risk models for our growers. So for example, if you plant early, you may avoid certain insect pests such as soybean loopers that migrate in late and hopefully uh, we can we can show that for our, our producers where we can actually maybe manage insect pest populations through uh, things as simple as planting date. So talking about planting date when is the best time in the growth stage for soybean to be scouting the fields? Well personally I think you need to be in that field from the time it's planted to the time it's harvested. There's no substitution for putting tracks in a field. Uh, from a pest standpoint, honestly, the, the worst pressure usually occurs during the reproductive stages, but it's not uncommon at all for us to reach threshold on some insect pests, particularly on later planted beans prior to the uh, reproductive stages. So we need a person in that field if for no other reason, even if pest pressure is low at that time, they might find a disease or something that's outbreaking or a spot of resistant weeds that are showing up on the back 40 that the growers miss. So it's always important to have eyes in that field. And what are the techniques that you use to scout? Well, the most common used method uh, throughout the South is the sweep net. And the sweep net is used primarily because we often change row spacing in the South, and the sweep net is good for a number of row spacing. A drop cloth is used to a lesser extent, and occasionally visual samples are used, but a sweep net by far is the most common method being used. So Angus, would you demonstrate sweep net technique for us? Sure, I'll be glad to. So I noticed you were walking pretty fast, just like you said. Yeah, it's important that you walk fast because you don't want to spook any highly mobile insects that may be in front of you. And notice how I was hitting the rows at a perpendicular movement with sort of a scooping action. That's important too. What are some other best practices like placement, uh, where you're hitting it on the canopy? Well, you want to try to hit, you know, midway down the canopy with a scoop in action. Try to dig deep into it. That's why it helps to sometimes have a really heavy rim. It actually parts the canopy a little better. And really, it's not uncommon to get this foliage in your net. If you're sweeping correctly, you should be getting some foliage in your net with you. But that foliage doesn't create any problem for your yield. No, it doesn't create any problem at all. It's better to sample and find out what's causing you a problem and take care of it than the little bit you might hurt in your sampling technique. And now, where do you sample? Do you sample at the edges? Do you sample all through? What about location? Well, you want to sample all over the field. You want to take a representative sample of that field. Now, keep in mind, if I'm having a problem, though, on the edge, and I'm way above threshold on the edge, it's not uncommon for me just to spray where the problem is or for our growers to do that as well. But from a field standpoint, you want to take a kind of a good representative field average at least four or five stops in that field, uh, but be aware where your pressure starts. A lot of times it does start on a field edge. So visual plant damage is a big indicator of uh, reaching threshold, but it can be deceptive. Could you talk to us about that? Well, it can be very deceptive. It's really common to overestimate defoliation levels in the field. A lot of times what we'll do is we have a number of publications that actually show you the fine levels of defoliation. It's really a good idea to kind of calibrate yourself. The other thing you need to really be aware of when you go into the field is these defoliation thresholds are based on whole plant defoliation levels. You can't just look at the top of the plant and let that be your threshold. You need to look at the whole plant and take that into consideration. Here's a good example. This leaf right here, this come out of the, the terminal of a plant and that has a fair amount of defoliation on it. But really, if you look down this plant, that's the only place it's at. So of course, you don't want to make your determination on the top 
10 or 20 percent of the plant you want to take into account the whole plant so although that terminal looked like it had a lot of defoliation from a whole plant standpoint the way our thresholds are designed virtually nothing right now one thing i want to touch back on is you mentioned insect complex and that particularly applies to our growers in the midwest and the north who may not have one single insect that creates a threshold situation but with that insect complex they do reach that threshold. Can you comment on that? Well, and that's very similar to the conversation we had about the percent defoliation. It can be a complex that causes this. Now, we have the same problem in the south as well. We always have a number of different insect pests in the field that one or a combination of may be causing us a problem. But again, there's no substitute for somebody being in that field, making footprints, sampling to determine which one is the primary cause of the problem, if for no other reason, so you can choose the correct chemistry against that particular pest. Now, we're talking about threshold here, but really briefly, can you define threshold for us? Well, I, I can, and it's really, I'm glad you asked that because it's very important to understand that. Uh, so a threshold, a threshold is that point where we're going to make, uh, where the decision is made to take action against a pest. Generally, it's with an insecticide. But a lot of people, what a lot of people don't know or they don't realize is what goes into that. And it's important to really kind of have a basic concept of it. Uh, it'll help you in, in your scouting and when making determinations. But actually what goes into a threshold, the first thing that's got to happen, and there's got to be an economic injury level set. This is what happens behind the scenes with your researchers and so forth. An economic injury level is, is that point the lowest population of the insect pest you're concerned about, the lowest population that actually causes you economic loss. So what we'll do if the economic injury level is here, we'll set the threshold below it. Now the point is we want to stop them here before they're actually causing yield loss, economic loss to us as our producers. Now that's very important and it's important because a lot of times if you don't understand that concept, a lot of people think that we're losing yield when you get to threshold and because of that they'll start cheating the thresholds down and that's not necessary so it's important to understand why. So once the consultant or the grower himself has recognized that they've reached threshold, what's the next step? Well, the next step is simply just coming up with a plan of action that you're going to take. Oftentimes it includes picking an insecticide or a class of insecticide that you want to treat that population with. And again, you need to make that decision based on the most current information that you have available. And that's where having an educated consultant or retailer is so critical to a grower, correct? That's absolutely correct. Well, Angus, thank you so much. Really thank appreciate you. it. As Angus told us, putting boots on the ground helps you monitor pest pressure in your field. And it's also critical to properly identify the insect causing that pressure in order to determine the best course of action and maintain your yield. As always, send in your questions, comments, and ideas to authorityminute.com. This is Jake Turner reminding you to be safe out there. See you down the road when you have a minute and Authority Minute.